Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 82 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, I'm going to talk about a project that I'm about to start, which addresses two of the issues I've kind of had about the pond keeping hobby, really. Um, Maybe issues is too strong a word, but something that I, I felt is kind of missing in the hobby. Now, the first off is good data. Data so you're able to decide what treatment you should use for particular conditions, what good stocking levels are, what the best filters are, all that sort of stuff. And the second is just to get an idea of what kind of ponds people have out there. I think if you were to do a a search on YouTube and you search ponds, you'd probably come up with mostly koi ponds, but I don't know, and I don't know if anyone knows if that is the most popular part of the pond keeping hobby. So I thought that might answer that question as well, because I think there's probably quite a lot of people out there who have quite interesting ponds that don't necessarily fit into what you see as the stereotype garden pond. So rather than moan about it, which I've been tending to do, I thought I'd try and come up with a solution. And that's the project that I'm hoping to do over the next 12 months, really. So I've started a database and it's a database, hopefully, that will provide lots of information about the kind of ponds people have, the kind of filtration people have, the stocking levels people have, and what happens to their pond over the 12 months that I'm going to run the database. So what illnesses the fish have, whether the fish spawn, whether they add additional fish into the pond. My plan is to start it in March, so in a couple of weeks time. And what I would really need everyone's help on this because I haven't got a particularly large amount of subscribers. Obviously not everyone who subscribes to a pond keeping channel has a pond themselves. So I really, really need people to also share this if they think it's a good idea. Get it out there to maybe some of the more popular pond keeping channels and get it out there on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all of that stuff. Now, there's a number of issues with a database like this. Firstly, is I'm going to host it on Google Drive. So it's a document that everyone's going to be able to have access to and add their data into. Now, the first problem with that is obviously everyone else can see it and also everyone else could edit it, which is kind of a problem. And I did think of maybe just sending out an email to everyone that they could reply to and then I could enter the data into the database myself. The problem with that is potentially, if you look at some of the larger pond keeping channels, they have thousands of subscribers. Now, if, even if half of that number of people have a pond and want to take part, I haven't got time to be individually, personally, adding thousands of people's data into the, into the database. So I really need everyone to individually do that themselves, really. So it will be a form that everyone can enter their own data, um, certainly initially to set up information about their pond and then during the year as things progress. So it will be a document that everyone has access to. Now, initially, when you first follow the link, which will be in the description below, you'll then have to request access to it and I'll then have to authorise it. But that's relatively painless process rather. So, as I said, there is an issue in that people could not only update their own information, but could update other people's information. So this is a bit of a trust exercise. What I will be doing, though, is on a a very regular basis, um, downloading the last known accurate copy. So if anything is done to the document to spoil it, I'm not suggesting we have those kind of people in the pond keeping community. But if it was to happen, I'll have a backup that I can then re-upload and hopefully work out who the person who did it was. So the other issues with it as well is it it can also be personally identifying information. I try to keep that to a minimum, Um, but really it's about, you know, you only need to add what information you're comfortable with adding really. And you'll see in a little bit when I go through the form um, that you've got options to be anonymous, you've got options to limit exactly the, the amount of information you add, which might be identifying to you. Now, the other thing is you may not do all the tests that you could possibly enter into the database. You may not know all the information about your pond. Not everybody knows how many litres their pond is, for instance, but that's fine. Just add the information you've got. All, any information will be useful in getting a picture of what ponds are like within the community. Um, I should also say at this point, it's not just a UK thing. So if you're in Canada or you're in Germany or you're in France, wherever you are, it'd be great if you join in too, because it'd be interesting to see the differences um, between different countries in terms of filtration, pond types, the kind of problems they have with the pond and how they solve them. So as I said, 
please, please share it. If you think it's a good idea, please share it. If you think it's a good idea, but you'd like to make some changes to it, or if you have some other ideas to how to collect the information, I'd be really grateful to receive them. There's not long, because as I said, I want to start in March. So there's a couple of weeks. Um, and as I also said, it is live. Now, you can, I guess, wait till March to see if I do make any changes to the document before you start adding your information. Um, but if I do change it and you have already added information, I will let you know. So what I plan to do at the end of 12 months is obviously do some analysing of the data and see if there's any patterns that come up, see if there's any, any helpful or useful information we can gain. Now, it may just be that we learn a little bit more about what the Pong Kung Pin hobby is like in this country and other countries, or we get a bit more information about how best to treat ponds, about what's good around stocking levels, that sort of thing. And maybe some of the things that actually are more likely to precipitate problems. So if you upgrade your filters, do you then have a problem after? If you add new fish, are you more likely to have a problem? Some of the things we probably would guess, but it'd be interesting to have some data that actually backs that up. Right then, so now I'll move on to the actual form itself and show you how it works and show you how I think comparatively easy it is to add data to it, although um, it's a little bit daunting maybe when you first see it. Right, so this is the form and how you'll see it on Google Drive. Um, the first thing I want to show you is just some bits around navigating. There'll be a lot of scrolling right, as you can see. And obviously I'll go through all these sections, so don't be too put off by them. It's quite simple to um, fill in data really. But the first thing I want to show you is that you'll notice this left hand column, which has your name, if you wish to enter it, um, that stays fixed. So as you scroll through the columns, you'll, you'll, you'll not be confused about which row you should be on. It, you'll know which row you should be on because it'll have your name in. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier. Now, similarly as well, if we get lots of people entering in the form and there's lots of rows used up, as you scroll down the page, the top three rows stay fixed as well. So you always know what column you're entering in. Right, so let's start. So the first section is personal info. Now, as I said, I only really want people to enter in um, the amount of information they're comfortable with. So there's a, only a very small amount of information that could be described as um, personally identifying information. So you can add your name if you wish, or you could add a pseudonym, or you could add initials. Um, it's really up to you. So to go through all this form, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll fill in for myself. So in my own section, I'll add, just add in my first name, now this next row, and this is the first of a number of columns, sorry, that um, you can have a drop down menu for. So all of the columns that have drop down menu entry are shaded green, just so it's obvious. So this is quite a simple, just yes or no. So I do have a YouTube channel and it's called Keeping Water, as you may or may not know. Um, and there we go. Now, the reason I want it, I think it's useful to know if people have a YouTube channel is really just to see if there's a difference in the type of ponds that people have, really. And is there a difference to how organized people are, how much they test, how much they um, change their stocking or update their stocking, um, how much they're building or constructing their ponds, how new they are to it. So it'll be quite interesting to see if there's any differences between people who have YouTube channels and don't. Now, the last bit of personal info is location. Now, again, I don't want people to be more precise than they'd like to be. And again, personally identifying. So I think a reasonable amount is the county and the country. Now, again, you might not be in England or the United Kingdom. So just leave whatever you feel happy with. So if you're in Germany, you can just write Germany or you could write the town. It's really up to you. And again, that will be interesting to see if there's any differences in terms of types of pond or types of filtration or experiences that people are having with illnesses with their fish, depending on where they're based. Now, the next section is about the pond itself. So the first column is pond type. So there's four options, a formal pond in ground, a raised formal pond, 
informal ponding ground or informal raised pond and I am an informal in ground pond so I click on that option. The next is pond volume and that's in litres. Again you may or may not know this and as, again as I said in the intro it doesn't matter if you don't know all the information. Obviously the more data we've got the better but if you don't know precisely or you don't know at all that's fine just fill in what you know and what you're happy with sharing. So my pond, if we scroll all the way down here, it's about 10,500. Now that doesn't include filtration and I'm not entirely sure how much that will be. Um, so I will tend to round up and I'll call it 11,000 liters. Years since build, right. So my pond was built in 2015, I think. Can't remember now, it's terrible, isn't it? But the current iteration of the pond, so the current version where I basically started from scratch again, is between three and four years. So I'll call it four years. Um, that may be different for you. In this drop down menu again, it goes up, I think, to 50 years, which I'm not sure many people have, but it's there as an option. Now, this next section is about plants and it's principally plants that are in the pond, not plants that are in a veg filter that will be covered later on. So, and it's a fairly, um, not very subtle list. So it's either none, some, or lots. I think I have lots of plants. Now this is a construction type, and this will mainly be for ponds that are raised ponds. So sleeper slash wood, sleeper slash wood with window, brick, brick with window, other, other with window, or not applicable. So for me, having an, an in-ground uh, pond, it's not applicable. Now the lining material, um, again, is basically what makes your pond watertight, really. So liner, box liner, fiberglass, preformed or other. And I have liner. And the last two are covered in winter, which is nope. I'm covered in autumn, but that doesn't really count. And heated, and again, no. So that's the first two sections done. Again, we can scroll along and the next bit is what is, is the inhabitants of the pond. So what lives in your pond? So let me just scroll that a bit further. So I've got space for six species. Now, some of you may have more than six species in your pond and that's great. And if you do, let me know and I will add some more columns so you can fit that in. So basically it's about finding out the number of different fish and the relative and the size of each really. So if I start with my pond, I have a tench and it is between 40 and 49 centimetres. And I have one tench, so it's 45 centimetres, so that's where it fits in. My next species is rud. Now, I've got some rud fry, so I will count them in the one centimetre to 10 centimetre category. And I have about 22 of them. And I also have some that are about six inches long which is 10 to 19 and i have 13 of them now the next species i have are carp and at the moment i have two carp and they're between 60 and 69 centimeters now i'm not entirely sure how long they are just because i haven't measured them for sort of 18 months but i would guess they're about in that range and that is all the species I currently have in the pond. Obviously you have more, you may have more, you may have less. Um, there's quite a few species in this drop down list. There's koi, grass carp, sturg sturgeon, sturlet, minnows, all sorts. So you've got a fairly wide choice depending on what your pond has. And the final little section there just after current stock is other wildlife. So for me, that's really frogs. So I do have frogs in the pond. I have some invertebrate and insect life in the pond as well, but I don't really know enough about how many. I don't think I have newts. I think in the very first iteration of the pond, I found a newt in the garden, um, but unfortunately it, it was dead. Um, so I'm not sure if I have any in and around the pond. I've not found any anyway. So the next section is species, is spawning so your fish may spawn so we've got four sections that you can add in that's depending on the different species that might spawn or you might get more than one spawning from 
each species and all that really is is you click on whatever species has spawned in your pond and then add the date so if i was filling this out for last year it would be rudd and i think it was april but um i'm not entirely sure but i think it was about april and we'll see this year i'm hoping as i've said in previous videos that i'm getting some more carp which means the carp might spawn and the rudd might spawn so not quite a lot going on and the final section in inhabitants is about new additions you might get during the course of the year so again it's that i think there's four spaces to fill this out in no three if you get more than three different species or three lots of new fish at any one time then let me know really and i'll put some more, more columns in so again you can choose the species of fish you've got add what kind of type they are and how many so if you've got a whole load of fry you might have a hundred koi fry for instance so you can stick that in like that so I'll clear all that data right on to the next bit which i think is filtration right so and the first section is is it pump fed or bottom drain so mine is pump fed so i'll click on that trickle in so that's basically systems if you don't know where you're constantly tricking in fresh water and you're overflowing um, water that's in the pond so you're basically doing a water change very slowly and gradually which is a great system and i would love to have it but i haven't unfortunately pressure filter again it's just a yes and no choice so i haven't got one multi-bay yes i have sieve again i'd quite like one but i haven't um, RDF which is a rotary drum filter again I'd really love one but I haven't moving bed yes tempest upflow yes easy pod no nexus no backy shower no again I'd like one backy river no skimmer yes box filter by which I mean one of the stereotypical black box um, filters that have a variety of different media and both mechanical and um, biological in and again I have had one in the past but not now and then veg filter no and then there's a little box for other and again I haven't got any other filtration so that's the basic setup of your system for people to see the next bit of data is really around how your pond fluctuates or doesn't during the year and some of the monthly data um, you can collect now you may not collect this kind of data or do these kind of tests on a monthly, weekly, daily, yearly basis. So really just fill in what you do. Um, I know that some people, and I hope to this year, do water tests weekly. Um, some people only test water when they think there's a problem. And that's fine. It's really whatever data you've got, whenever you've collected it over the 12 months, enter it in. So there's pH, so you could enter your pH score there. Now mine is usually eight, so I would usually put an eight in there, but it's really the average. So if you do test every week, um, for instance, or even more than that, um, it's the average over each month. So there's KH, GH, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, oxygen, if you test that. And then we got into things that aren't technically tests. There's some of the things you might be doing with the pond. So how much you feed on a daily basis as an average in grams. Now, again, you might not measure that. I haven't. I will hopefully will be this year, but I generally don't. Um, but I think it's quite useful. Then the temperature of your pond. So the average temperature during the month. And again, in a month, month like March, it might be quite a wide swing, especially if you're not heated. It could be two degrees or it could be 12 degrees. Then how much filter cleaning you're doing. So again, it will depend on a little bit on what type of filtration you have. But let's say are you doing you cleaning the filter once a week, twice a week, um, once a fortnight. So that would be 0.5 a week. At the moment, I'm cleaning my filters once every sort of one to one and a half week. And then also how much water you change on a weekly basis. So I change um, in the height of the summer. I could be changing as much as 2000 litres a week. Um, usually it's closer to 1000 litres but again if I had a trickle in trickle out um, I wouldn't be doing that all in one go so it can either be how much your trickle in trickle out system changes or how much you do in a big water change um, when you clean your filters right so there's space for that for every month really Ooh, 
wrong button space for that for every month really um, throughout the 12 months that we can be collecting data for um, now it doesn't matter as I said that you do this every month It'd be great if you do but you know I wouldn't want that everyone felt they needed to go out and buy all these test kits and do all this regularly but just you know just enter it when you collect it and you've got some data to put in and don't worry if you don't as as I said in the introduction there's a lot of reasons for collecting all this data it's not just to see how certain um, parameters fluctuate during the year and whether there's correlations between that and what kind of filtration and what kind of stocking levels people have um, or where they live in the country um, it's also just to see what types of ponds people have out there and um, you know I think if you if you go on YouTube and you search for ponds, most of what you'll find are koi ponds. Um, is that true? Do most people have koi ponds or are there a lot more people who have a goldfish pond, for instance? And it'll be interesting to find out if we get enough people filling the data in. So don't worry if you don't necessarily fill out all of this kind of section. Um, you know, just fill in what's relevant to you, really. Now, the final bit is around health. And this was really the starting point of why I wanted to do this. It was to try and collate data from as many people as possible about how they, what, sorry, what kind of illnesses their fish have had and how they've treated them and what's worked really. And it'll be also to kind of cross-reference that with the types of fish there they've got in their ponds and the type of filtration and the water temperatures and all that sort of thing. So by and large, it's kind of, um, straightforward so the type of condition so it might be costier for instance when you realize they had it so I put diagnosed but that's because I'm a nurse um, but when you realize they had costier and the sort of treatments you use so you might have given FMG and you might have done two treatments um, you might have had to do another treatment times two and then at the end of that put the date that it was resolved so the date you felt your fish were well again and then we'll get a kind of an idea of how much work people are having to do, what type of treatments people are doing and how that works out for everyone. So I've put space for, sorry, this isn't scrolling. I've put space for four bouts of illnesses. Hopefully people won't have any more than that. Again, if you find you do, then let me know and I'll add some more columns. Um, and what I, what I mean by bouts of illnesses is not they've had costier and you felt you got on top of it but then you tested it again and you haven't because that's probably just one bout of it really so it might be you have costier in april in some of your fish you treat them by the beginning of may they're fine and then in july you have trick or something so um it's yeah it's four very separate bouts and that by and large is it um it is seems quite an unwieldy form I hope I've explained it reasonably well. If you have any problems, then post some comments on this video. Or if you look down the bottom of here, there's a comments tab. Um, and in that, you can put a date, put your name if you wish. You don't have to do either, really. Date's useful just so I can keep up with the comments I've answered and come across. Um, and then just write what other problems you're having and what you'd want some help with. Or if you go to my YouTube page, you will find an email address too that you can go to. Oh, one final thing that I forgot actually, that's quite important. You may have more than one pond. So if you do have more than one pond, just start another row really. So put your name in there again, all that information again, and then talk about your second pond or your third pond or your fourth pond. Um, I only have one pond. Uh, yeah, so you can you can add as many ponds as you have really. You're not limited to just talking about one pond. I think that's a reasonable explanation of it. Um, as I said, any questions, comment section below. And we will hopefully, hopefully this will capture enough data. If there's anything um, you think could be included or anything you think I need to include in a slightly different way, um, then let me know and I'll, I'll do my best. For instance, if I've missed out a really obvious type of filtration, then again, let me know and I'll aim to put that in. And again, I don't think I've missed out on any species. I think I've by and large included most species that people have in their ponds. 
um, again let me know if I if I've missed out species you've got and I'll, I'll try and update the form right I hope that was reasonably understandable um, if you have any questions please as I said share them in the comment section below um, as I also showed there's a comment section on the form um, one thing I think I missed on that bit was to say you don't need to actually save in Google Drive um, if you don't already know. Once you enter the data, you can just close it and it's, al it's already automatically saved. So yeah, any advice you may have, any questions you may have, please share them. Um, and please take part, really. It's, I think it's a good opportunity to get a lot of data together about ponds and treatments and filters and just get an idea of what the community's like, really. And, and it is a pond keeping community, I think. It's not just a, um, a koi keeping or a goldfish keeping or wildlife pond keeping. It's all different types of pond keeping. You know, I think we can all learn from each other. So it will be very useful. Right then, I think that's it. Um, as I said, I can't ask you enough to share it if you think it's a good idea. Share it everywhere you know, share it with other YouTubers, share it with other people you know, maybe in real life who haven't got a YouTube account or but they do have a pond because that's the kind of people we want to hear from really so that's it thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time